Are you ready, sir? Are you ready? Right there. The square. Okay. Okay. That was I was over here. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Sunnyside City Council regular meeting for today, September 25, 2023. Um, it's kind of exciting to see the chambers this full, and I know some of the reasons some of you are here, and it is exciting. I'm glad to see all of you here to support uh, our, our chief and our assistant chief, so this is all kind of exciting. For the record, all members of council are present, either in person or online. And all members of staff are here, with the exception of City Manager Alba, who has requested an excused absence. Council, she is feeling quite sick today. Exciting! I'm glad to see all here to support our chief and our assistant chief. So, wow, I don't normally like to listen to myself. <laughs> no. So no objection. All right. She is excused. Council, I also had it brought to my attention at the end of our last meeting that I was remiss. And uh, our Deputy Mayor Stucci had requested an excused absence at that meeting, but something distracted me right before the meeting and I did not bring that to your attention. Um, are we, is there any objection to granting Deputy Mayor Stucci an excused absence for the last meeting? He was taking care of state business. So he had, I know, a valid reason. So, okay. So he is our ex excuse for our last meeting. Thank you, Council. All right, next item of business is the invocation. Do we have someone here to do the invocation? All right, I'd like to ask everybody to please rise for the invocation. And after that, please stay standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, well, gracious God and Father in heaven, I do thank you for this meeting tonight and for all those who serve on the city council. And uh, thank you for all those who serve in our city in other ways. Think about our firefighters and police and all they do to keep our city safe with your help. And I pray tonight for this meeting that you would grant wisdom and discernment to our city council members for the decisions that they make. I pray for your special blessing upon this meeting and also for the city of Sunnyside, that everyone in this town would have the opportunity to know the grace and mercy and love of Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic. Thank you. You may be seated. I, however, I'm going to come down around the front and I'm going to ask our new assistant fire chief, Chad Denbor, to come forward. evening for all of us. We've got two important positions that have been filled, and thank you everybody for coming down and supporting these individuals. I'm going to follow along. I ask that you raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Chad Denbor, I, Chad Denbor, do solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States of America. I do solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States of America, the state of Washington, the state of Washington, and to discharge faithfully the duties of an assistant fire chief for the city of Sunnyside. And to discharge faithfully the duties of an assistant fire chief for Sunnyside. To the best of my knowledge and ability, to the best of my knowledge and ability, and to hold myself to the highest moral and ethical standards, and to hold myself to the highest moral and ethical standards as a representative of the Sunnyside Fire Department and this profession, as a representative of the Sunnyside Fire Department and this profession. Thank you, sir. Welcome. And I'll sign these and keep looking out for the Any members that would like to take a picture with chief at the, or assistant chief at this time, you can come forward. Yeah, you've got people for the future.
case anybody is wondering, this is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> we may call you back up in a minute. So okay. you okay. All right. <laughs> Next, I would like to call our new chief, Cameron Holbrook, to come forward. Please raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I, Cameron Holbrook. I, Cameron Hopper, do solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States of America. Do solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States of America. The state of Washington. The state of Washington. And to discharge faithfully the duties of fire chief of the city of Sunnyside. And to discharge faithfully the duties of fire chief of the city of Sunnyside. To the best of my knowledge and ability. The best of my knowledge and ability. And to hold myself to the highest moral and ethical standards. Hold myself to the highest moral and ethical standard as a representative of the Sunnyside Fire Department and this profession. As a representative of the Sunnyside Fire Department and this profession. Welcome aboard, sir. Okay. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> You got the support of your brethren <laughs> and the encouragement. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have two individuals here who I have come to think very highly of. Our assistant chief I've known since he was a very young man, and to see him grow and develop into be able, be able to take this position and take these responsibilities on is very gratifying to me. Um, and then, of course, our new fire chief stepped up when we needed him. There was a period of time when he thought maybe he didn't really want to be the chief, and I believe he grew into the position, and um, I am very excited to have both of these individuals in the positions that they are, and I think they will be both very good for the city of Sunnyside and our fire department. So thank you and congratulations, gentlemen. All right, so I don't know if the department is going to go or stay. You're certainly welcome to stay, but you're not required to. Thank you for coming and supporting everyone. <laughs> Give you a chance to make your way out if you're leaving. For the rest of the audience while they're making their way out, this is, in fact, one of the more gratifying part, parts of being on the city council and for me being the mayor is to recognize the individuals who serve our community and get to know them and see their dedication and commitment and how committed they are to each other. The, smart of the, the support of the fire department coming in here tonight to support their brothers in their promotion and stuff, that was, that was good. So that's the part I enjoy. The next part is another part I also enjoy. And that is public comment. We have multiple pages this evening, which is kind of exciting. Sometimes we don't have a single names, and tonight we've got a number of you who wish to speak. 
And the first name on the list is Janet Hicks. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, move to suspend the rules and let our citizens take as much time as they need uh, to express their thoughts. Council, is there any objection to Mr. Farmer's proposal? Well, all right, so the minute the rules are suspended, normally we allow for three minutes, but uh, this evening we will allow you to uh, speak your mind and not give you a time limit. All right, again, Janet Hicks. Please uh, state your name and your city of residence into the microphone. Please speak clearly into the microphone. I noticed the last time that um, it was a little bit difficult to understand in the recording for some people. So let's do our best. There's still too many people here. Um, <laughs> Janet Hicks, Sunnyside. Um, I just want to start out on a positive note that for Sunshine Days, I don't know how many of you went, but it was awesome. The parade was better than I've seen in years. And I just want to congratulate the company who put it on and hopefully we can build even more next year. Thank you. Next person on my list is Debbie Jessup. Hi, my name is Debbie Jessup and I have a couple issues for um, the traffic. Um, we're having a lot of people drive down our street 70, 80 miles an hour and if I went out and drove like that I'd be pulled over and I live on South 4th Street um, what is it? Oh, the exit going from Sunnyside to Prosser. It loops around, as everybody well knows. Um, on that loop, there is no guide paint line on the inside. And I myself, and I've seen others do it, um, end up over in the yard because we can't see the, the line. So that's a big issue I'm worried about myself and others getting into a wreck. Um, the, the paint line is my main complaint and there is also a pothole, a pretty good size one, the entrance into Sunnyside from east to west. Big pothole. And I've hit it numerous times. Otherwise, I am good. Thank you for hearing me out. All right. Thank you for your comments. I'm not sure how much jurisdiction we have on an on-ramp or an exit. That may be a state issue, but we can certainly check that out. Next name on the list is Oscar Verdusco. Good evening, Oscar Verdusco, um, Sunnyside resident for uh, the past 30 years. And uh, I'd like to ask the, the council and the uh, police department for their um, strategy and their policy on addressing uh, the discharging firearms in city limits. Um, I am often outside, I have two boys, uh, ages 13 and nine, um, and we hear gunshots well within city limits uh, and not a single siren um, uh, going in the direction of um, the gunshots. Um, I live on West Grandview Avenue, and this uh, Saturday afternoon was beautiful until about uh, 7.20 p.m. Um, my two boys uh, and three of their neighbor friends from across the street were riding their bicycles in our driveway. Uh, I was in our backyard um, when I heard uh, the unloading of a firearm. Literally, it sounded like it was at my front door. I ran around the house to watch my two boys and their neighbor friends pounding on the front door, which we keep locked for safety reasons, to have their mom let them in. They 
had the chance to describe to me later the fireball that they watched coming out of the window of a car. I don't think that's what we wish for our uh, kids this age to uh, have to experience. Um, I called uh, the police department. I described the vehicle as I saw it drive past my house. Um, it took five, 10 minutes uh, for a police officer to finally come by. Um, they spoke to a neighbor for a few minutes um, and that was the extent of it. I haven't gotten a call back. Um, there wasn't um, clips um, on the city street um, like there was uh, less than two months ago. Two months ago, I picked up about 15 rounds, um, no more than 100 yards from where this shooting took place. Um, my neighbor called that in. I don't believe that uh, she was ever followed up with um, uh, by the police department. Um, I think um, I would appreciate seeing a uh, stronger presence by the police department. Uh, the, their visibility is, uh, I think, a significant deterrent, um, one of which we just don't see enough of. Uh, so I'd like to, to ask what the policy and the strategy to addressing a growing problem, and maybe it's just in my neighborhood, but it shouldn't be uh, tolerated in any part of, of the city. Thank you. Council, does anyone have an objection to allowing the chief to respond to Mr. Verduzco? Chief, would you go ahead and respond? Yeah, Mr. Verduzco, if we can locate the vehicle uh, during that, we would obviously charge them. Um, in the future, I'd ask that you don't pick up casings so that we can collect them. We do have ways of tracking firearms through casings that can tie shootings together. Um, it's actually entered into a national database. If a shooting happens in Sunnyside, Wapato, Yakima, and Sela, we can tie that firearm together through uh, investigative leads that we have. Um, as far as response, um, I... I'm sorry, please let, let the, the chief speak. I, I can't tell you what was going on during that time, um, but uh, five to 10 minutes, we, we expect a quicker response than that. I'll, I'll look into it for sure. I took some notes while you were speaking. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. And Council, for the record, Mr. Verduzco is my next door neighbor. I was not home when that happened, but this is the second time this summer that that has happened. And not just because it's in my neighborhood, it is not acceptable in any neighborhood. And so we definitely have to put some pressure on these guys. And if we can get these shootings to come to an end, um, yes, so far they've been shooting up into the air, all fine and dandy. Um, it only takes one for them to not shoot up in the air anymore. So yeah, I think there's a risk there and we need to get a, we need to get on top of that. Our next person is Holly Boss. Hi, my name is Holly Boss. I am from Sunnyside. Um, I have lived here going on seven years now and I have been, never been so disgusted and appalled about the cleanliness of a town what you're doing about the stray animals is out of control and nobody seems to care. I have called Miss Alba numerous times, emails numerous times. She does not respond. And the only time she has talked to me, she made grandiose promises of how she cleaned up Prosser. But yet the only time I call is the only time I see weeds getting taken care of. It's, it's the same thing. The gang graffiti, we've got graffiti everywhere. I'm paying my own money for spray paint to clean up because nobody else is going to do it. And, you know, I'll be danged if they think they're going to run my town. This is not how I was raised. That's not where I'm going to live. I want to be proud where I live. To this day, I do not want my family or friends to come see where I live because it's not being taken care of. It's embarrassing. You have taco trucks and car lots on every corner. And Nothing's being cleaned. Nothing's being organized. 
it's ridiculous. What are you guys going to do to clean this up? If you don't start cleaning up now, and now you want to bring more low-income housing in, what's that going to do? That is going to be more problems, more gang problems, more drug dealing. It's going to get worse. I know there's low-income housing. There's one going in. Swimming pools, sports centers. Excuse me. I work my butt off. My husband works two jobs. We don't have a swimming pool. When are we going to quit with the handouts and start cleaning this town up where we can get better business in? you got Hop Town that's got the most beautiful building in here, and we have people urinating on their business already, and they're not even open. Stealing their copper piping, stealing their flowers. Where's the, where's the patrol in this town? Where's the pride in this town? We're, instead of spending money on low-income housing, all this, why don't we do something for the senior citizens? There's nothing even here for the senior citizens to get together. My mother-in-law is going through dementia and it's not doing her any good sitting in a house when there should be a community for the seniors to get together, keep their minds going, have a place that people can drive them to church, help them. There's nothing. And I don't understand this. I don't understand. Nobody just turns a blind eye to everything, it seems like. And Miss Alba, I have not seen her do a thing except broken promises. And I would like to see what she's doing with all this money comes to this town because it's sure not doing anything to clean it up. So I want to see a forensic audit where this money is going to because it's not going anywhere to clean anything up. I want to be proud of this town. I want it to look like Grandview. I want it to look like Prosser. Bring some more businesses in, but until it happens, nobody's going to bring a new business into this town because everything's going to get ripped off. You can't have it. We've got to clean this up and we've got to take control of it now or it's going to get worse. And as far as the shootings, we have them out where I live and I'm not going to put up with it. If I confront them, I confront them. That's the way it goes. But I will not let them rule my life and take over my area. And I hope you guys start paying attention to what's going on and want to clean this place up. Thank you. Thank you. Next name on my list is Ruby Medina. Good evening. My name is Ruby Medina, born and raised here. I'm not going to tell you what year. <laughs> um, my mom, uh, well, I'm a family of 14. So we were all uh, born and raised here, graduated here. I think my brother actually started the first rock and roll band in the 1980s. So, yeah, he was good. He's really good. But I'm here today because I wanted to talk about the seriousness of the animals, the running at large, not having an animal control officer. And I know that the city is working towards um, making positive change and so forth. But I really want to plead to the mayor, to the city council, um, something needs to get done. I have called and left messages to Jacqueline. For the last week and a half, I've not got a call back, not one. Um, I wanted to talk to you, Mayor, in regards to the different business partners that I have that are ready to go and help us and support us in regards to the animals, the, the stray animals and the animal issues that we have. I think it's really important. Um, I think it's critical. Um, I'm driving. I get calls all the time. Just last week, somebody decided to put a box that said free puppies in front of Ross, over six puppies. I picked them up immediately. I had to leave my home. I had to find a place for them to go. And if, you know, with all the different rescue partners that I have, I couldn't do what I do for our cities if it wasn't for the rescue partners. We have them. They're ready to support us, but nobody wants to take my calls. So I plead, please. Um, help us help me because it breaks my heart. I'm a clinical therapist. I certified ESA animals and only if it's appropriate. But when I see these animals, it's not a privilege. It's a responsibility to be able to care for your animals. And unfortunately, we live in a society where there needs to be rules and there needs, and I know that there's rules already for, you know, the, the well-being and the welfare and the safety of our animals, but they're just not being enforced. I call, I call to the PD and I'm being told we don't have ACO and I understand and I get it. But when it comes to the legality and it comes to stray animals, 
nothing's being received, nothing's being written down, taken, nothing. And it's just like, who helps these animals? Who helps them when we're the ones that are responsible for them? So I just ask um, if I can meet with you, Mayor, talk about the different you know support groups that we have. I've got a large rescue network who is willing to move animals out for us. I've got other rescues who are willing to do the vaccines. I've got another rescue from Seattle who's willing to purchase all the kennels. I've got two pallets of dog food ready to go and cat food for our cities because they heard me. They know we are struggling and they want to help us. So if you guys can help me to help our cities, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And I would be happy to meet with you. So thank you. <clears throat> Next is Tracy Kaufman. Did I say that right? All right. Um, this is going to be short and sweet. Um, last time when I talked, I appreciate you guys all listening, but um, I thought that I'd get a call back to talk about some of the issues. Um, business is very important for a small town. And I left my number on there. So I understand there's a lot going on, but I really do want someone from the council to give me a call so that you guys can't do it all. It, Society, um, your citizens need to, and I have offered. So please use the phone numbers that are on there and call, and let's try and do something together. Thank you. Thank you. And I apologize, Tracy. I was out of town last week. Otherwise, I probably would have stopped by. Stop by anybody. I just want somebody. No. Please, let's not go down this road. Next person is Tom Dolan. Hi again, everybody. Uh, Tom Dolan, Sunnyside, Washington, about 30 years. Um, good timing, just found my glasses. I wanted to cover uh, RCW 4240.040, improper government action. I have some, <clears throat> I think they're all questions, maybe not just statements, but I'm wondering why did the city continue to hold a vendor relationship after they discovered that the vendor was a nonprofit? Uh, why in the 626 council meeting did our uh, staff assist in covering this informa information uh, by referring to the <clears throat> change of nonprofit to a private entity? and did not provide the entity of who the private entity was. Uh, the city acknowledged that La Familia was not, was, a, was not a nonprofit or an actual business. However, they put La Familia on the parade plaques with the city. How was Armando Reyes allowed to be a vendor without a business license, a contract of services, or insurance to cover the liability of the services provided? What was the services he provided and what information did he send to the city to support the over budget of $17,540? When was this request made and when and by whom was it approved? The security company used was Top Flight Security. This business was closed in 2018 meaning they were not a legally operating business, did not have insurance, and was not bonded. Why wasn't proper vetting of the business licensing, insurance, bonding completed by the city? Why was top flight paid before they provided the service? How was the $30,000 spent on six local bands in comparison to a and promotions that brought in bands from Chicago, Texas, Florida, and Mexico? Where is a copy of their contracts to verify the cost of the bands and the time and dates they were to perform? What were the cancellation terms and fees? Did those bands have insurance? Armando submitted a receipt for reimbursement for a donation of $3,000 to the Grizzlies football team. Also the city in the final audited report stated they donated cash and city contributions. Public funds cannot be donated, reference M MRSC, gift of public funds. The city took action to credit the vendors for a service the city was not responsible, <clears throat> nor had 
a contractual obligation to. In addition, the list of vendors that received that credit could not be verified and presented to council or the public, nor was any effort made to get the information from a and &E Promotion to verify the claim from the vendor of refund. a, &E Promotions had a contract with each vendor, whereas a, &E Promotions and the city of Sunnyside were not held responsible. This information was never asked from a, a Promotions. Today at our Rotary meeting, we talked about, um, we voted on whether we would take on this big project in uh, not only the Lighted Farm Implement Parade, but Cinco de Mayo also. And we had a unanimous yes from everybody in the club. And so I would, I would hope you'd consider and uh, I'd like to be notified when the LTAC meeting is. Having been on LTAC, I see a lot of problems there, but like I promised, I'll chunk it down for you and see you at the next city council meeting. Thank Thanks, you. sir. Next name is Sis Kennard. Good evening, I'm Sis Kennard. I am a resident on uh, Edison Avenue here in Sunnyside. And uh, I am uh, also a very active member of the Sunnyside Historical Association. And I have some information that I thought the council might be interested in. And that is that last Friday at four o'clock at the museum, we had our regular historical association board meeting, and we elected a slate of officers in accordance with our bylaws that are willing to work the next two years to save the museum. And uh, their first order of business is that we're having an open house on October 19th. Uh, it's actually a recruiting uh, meeting, hoping there's other people out there that are willing to save the museum and the history of Sunnyside. And we also are going to recognize some people that have spent years serving and keeping the museum open. And I would really like to invite the city council members to come by. It's gonna be probably from four to five. I promise cookies, um, but I would really like to have those people see you there because they have donated one of them more than 20 years to the organization and to keep the museum going. So it would be really nice to see them have that city support. Thank you, and I'll see you on the 19th. Thank you. And that is good news that you have elected new board members, so. Next name on my list is Britton Moore. Good evening, everybody. I wanna thank you for extending uh, the time limit. I appreciate that very much. I'll get through with this as quick as possible. Uh, first on my item here is, um, Mr. Mayor, you asked for, for facts. Um, in keeping privacy for the people that I have on this list, uh, we talked about, I, I brought up nepotism. Um, I've got some people on this list. I'm happy to give that to council for you to look into, to research this. Um, I've looked at some RCWs for Washington State, um, 50.04.180, um, specifically for kids under the 18. There were some jobs that never got posted this summer and they were hired and they were family members. So I will forward that information on to everybody. Um, the second thing I'd like to talk about is our police department. These folks are working tirelessly. I understand that we have enough money for seven new positions, seven new officers, um, but we've got, I heard the other day, one of the officers worked 14 days straight. That's too much. These are valuable people. They have homes, they have families. They need time off to rest. We have got to find a way to get some seasoned officers in town. And if that's a sign-up bonus, then that's what we need to do. These guys and gals are working way too hard. We're talking multiples of $4,000 in overtime pay. I am requesting uh, some, some records um, so that we can, we can look at this and go over it. It's, it's astounding, the overtime that's happening. And, and we're putting everyone's lives at risk, specifically theirs, and it's just not fair. So once I have those documents, I'll be happy to share those with you. And I think everyone should go over them. It's, it's important. 
Um, second thing I'd like to talk about, I, it, it's a big topic. It's, it's important. Um, literally City Hall has ran two girls practically out of town by bullying them. Um, Amy Rubio, nine months pregnant, put on a fabulous, fabulous Sunshine Days Parade. The city did not promote it. They said that there was an insurance issue. There was not. It was the same insurance that she's had for a very long time. Um, I set her up with that insurance years ago. Um, she also was called a thief here in this room a few weeks ago. That is not true. Amy is not a thief. As a matter of fact, I set her up with her accountant. Her accountant is very good friends with the mayor. So I think that by Ms. Alba calling her a thief is unimaginable. I would, and, and Lindsay Kerfman as well has been run out of town by Ms. Alba. Um, Peggy Beeler, lovely lady, very smart, very intelligent, is very bullied. And I, I'd like this to get addressed. I'd like to put it to bed. But the only way to do that is, is to have a sit down and possibly Mr. Mayor, Miss Alba, if she, if she wishes, and sit down with the girls, the ladies, and discuss this because it just shouldn't happen. These are volunteers in our town. Amy's done 20 plus years of, of, of volunteering. Um, it's just, we just can't happen. These are good people. So if we can set up a meeting at some point down the road, and just get this all on the table because Mr. Mayor, your names come up a lot, not getting back to the ladies or, or reaching out to them in a timely manner. And I know you're busy, um, but I'd, I'd like to get like it to get settled. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is a civil audit. Um, I think we need a civil audit based on the hiring and firing of things that have happened here in Sunnyside in the last year or two. Uh, this is an RCW 35A.13.080, accountability audits of hiring and firing. Council may cause an audit to be made of any department or office of the code city government and may elect the persons to make it without the advice or consent of city mayor. The second audit that I think we need to talk about is a forensic audit. We talked about that the last time. Ms. Alba was open to it at that meeting. The next day she changed her mind. Why? I have 3 million reasons why we need a forensic audit done. In December of 2022, there were $3 million balance in the ambulance fund. By January 5th, it was $300,000 in the hole. Ms. Horner stated it was due to overspending in 22. It was told to city staff that those funds would be replaced after the months on property sold. This is called concealing a fiscal condition from council, misappropriated, misappropriating restricted funds without council's approval, supplementing the general fund with enterprise funds. RCW 42.20.090, misappropriation by treasurer, class B felony, punishable five years, and a fine of $5,000. RCW, RCW 42.20.070, knowingly keep keeping false account or makes false entry or erasure of an account. I'm asking for a civil audit. I'm asking for a forensic audit. We cannot afford not to do one. And I'll tell you why. There were three unauthorized raises in January of 2023 that I know of. All of $30,000 or more. Uh, Mr. Ken Anderson got one on February 6th. And he was let go eight days later. Why would he get a raise if he was going to be let go? Council did not know about these raises until after the fact. Unauthorized raises is not okay. It needs to go through council. I am asking for a civil and forensic audit. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next name on my list is Zach Heron. Good evening. My name is Zach Heron, President of Sunnyside Firefighters, Local 3542. Currently reside, reside in Yakima, Washington. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, first we want to thank you for your continued support for Sunnyside Fire Department. With your continued council support, we can provide our community with a high level of service. Seldom do we come to council to ask for anything. However, the council will be presented with a change in health insurance tonight. The city of Sunnyside was advised August 24th, 2023, that non-Teamsters Union people will no longer be covered by Teamsters insurance. Effective, that would be effective December 31st, 2023. Unfortunately, Sunnyside firefighters were not advised of the change until Tuesday, December, or Tuesday, September 19th. Later that week, we were informed that AWC insurance plan would come to city council today. That's my fault. There's a call coming in. <laughs> <laughs> this left little time for all of us non-Teamsters unions to research and evaluate the options. Letters have been sent to impact bargain. However, meetings have not yet been set. We ask council's help tonight with the AWC insurance. Even if this is a backup, um, like we've been advised, until everybody can sit down and evaluate all possible avenues, we think Council should table this decision until the next council meeting and give us the opportunity to go all sit down and, and talk and look through all of these avenues. So please table this until the next council meeting. Thank you. Thank you. And next name on my list is Melissa Heron. Hi guys, Melissa Heron, and I am the police department guild president. Um, and I am just here to echo what the fire department president advised. Um, we're asking for a little bit more time to be able to research what what we need, what is com comparable to what we currently have. Uh, we understand that this was a, a decision by the city and that we were dropped by Teamsters, which is totally okay. We, we just need a little bit more time to be able to figure out what it is that is comparable and something that we can afford. Um, I am just going to say I appreciate the communication back and forth, having, you know, once we have the information, we're able to communicate with Jameson and the city about it, but but we are also asking to table it for today, if possible, until the next council meeting, just so that we have a little bit of time to kind of square some things away. So thank you. Thank you. I have to please ask that you, uh, you refrain from talking so that everybody can hear what's being set up at the microphone. I know you have comments and opinions, but out of respect for the people speaking at the microphone, I'd like to ask that you refrain from the side chatter. It just makes it easier for everyone. Next name on my list is Jim Stevens. Uh, Jim Stevens, 328 Grandview Avenue, and I've been a resident here for 75 years just as everybody was counting. I mean, nobody really cares, but I want to mention it. Aside from what I was just going to talk about, uh, what I've heard here, uh, just as sitting here as a, uh, a viewer, uh, regarding some of the issues going on here with our finances, et cetera, um, that the council has not been informed of, is uh, disturbing. Um, as a manager of a business, uh, I would be alarmed. I'd be incredibly alarmed. It's happened to me before. I had a very trusted uh, staff member, like a family member, and uh, we had an issue come up that was uh, surprising. And so I talked to her about it, and uh, she said, oh, oh, yeah, I've got that covered. So she went got a record and pulled it in and showed it to me. But I had gone in and copied all these records before and the record she showed me was one she'd altered. And so we had a little sit down about that. And uh, eventually uh, uh, I had, a, I had a, a priest counsel with her and he said, I can't do anything about this. This girl will be on help. That was really disturbing. And we tried to give her a second chance, et cetera. But uh, so we went through and we did an audit and it was uh, the accountant that was doing it. Uh, we dismissed him and, and Rosalind and I did it ourselves. We did a forensic audit of our office 
and found out that in a relatively short period of time, this was uh, 15 years ago, she took us for, um, no, it was 20 years ago, she took us for over $40,000. We just quit counting at that time because we knew we weren't going to get paid any more than that. So what I see here is so incredibly similar that I think all of you as business managers and the board of directors for this business of Sunnyside, uh, if it was me, I'm not telling you what to do. I would call a forensic audit as Craig called for last, last time, which I think was absolute spot on. Uh, I would also lock up all the books so they can't be altered like they were in my case. And I would dismiss the employee, who in my case was our staff member. And I would go through and do that forensic audit because I don't want to be looking like I was sitting there uh, and I was a watchdog and all the cookies were gone by the time they turned the lights on. So uh, anyway, this is, uh, like I said, it's, it's disturbing. Uh, there's probably some other items that have come up to the, it's mismanagement. Uh, my old my old business consultant, Gene Goddess, old Jewish guy over in Medina, wonderful man. I loved him. And uh, he said, Jim, a fish smells from the head down. And I always find up, follow the money trail. Things, it, it just, it always seems to be that way. Uh, so at any rate, uh, I, would, I would hope that we can uh, uh, do something about this before it gets totally out of hand. Part of this management issue, we talked about dogs. This is a management issue. This is, this is not a dog issue. We have dogs barking all over town. The chief came in and helped us out with ours a little bit and uh, did the best that he could. He has to be empowered to do these things, and he has to have the staff. And so going out and giving uh, officers raises or bonuses to come to Sunnyside works in other areas. And we need to do whatever we can to give these folks uh, all the help they can. Uh, we talked about a forensic audit and said, I was told that we can't afford it. Yet we're giving the city manager a open checkbook to write $50,000 checks, uh, $49,000. Uh, uh, we paid $60,000, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, for a Christmas tree deal. And yet we can't do a forensic audit for $100,000 or whatever it is. I think we can't afford not to. Uh, I, I, again, as running a business, I, this, this, this is scary. So back to the dog issue. Uh, also, uh, the shooting that took place. I live on that street too. I didn't know anything about that. It's happened twice. Uh, and so uh, I live on that street. And so the shooting took place that same night there was a band I thought was next door, but the band was across way across the canal on West Edison. And uh, I, again, I thought they were next door and we had the doors closed. And so I called the police and uh, uh, anyway, they didn't respond. They called back. Anyway, finally they responded and I said, well, hey, I said, well, I didn't hear anything. So I said, well, I'll wait out in the driveway for you. So I did. He came and said, oh yeah, there definitely is something there. And uh, that was about 10 o'clock at night. And I said, well, you know what I think you ought to do? This is a flagrant violation of city ordinance. And I can't even imagine living next door to these people. I live a half mile away from them. I can't even imagine living next door with these people having to put up with. I said, you ought to go down there and give them a citation. So anyway, he left and not a very nice guy. And, uh, and I talked to him later that night and it was 1030 or 1025. It's still going on half hour later. And he said, well, I went down there and they paid for this band to come in and they were having a birthday party. So I told them that, and they said they paid for it till 1030. I said, well, 1030, then you've got to close it up. Are you kidding me? I, I couldn't believe this. Well, let's see, they're shooting at these people, but they have a lot of bullets left. So we're just going to have to wait until they're done emptying their clip. Uh, when are we going to enforce the ordinances as they're directed. So I, I believe we have a chief of police that'll do this, but our chief of police has to be empowered by the city manager. And you folks, no matter what is being told to you, have the absolute emphatic right to direct that city manager to do that. We set the ordinances and by golly gee whiz, you are gonna see that they're enforced. And if you don't, we're gonna get rid of you. This is the way management and business has to operate. 
we've got we've got we have a, a lot of issues going on here i'm not i'm not uh, 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 criticizing you one bit i'm just saying this is what we need to do uh so the issue i actually came with uh, i'll take a brief amount of time but this i've already taken too much time could you hand this to the council please so I made a deal on some uh, things about service dogs. Our UPS guy came into the office and said, your city hall looks like a dog pound over there. And I thought he was kidding. And then I started to hear more and more reports about this. We have all these service animals in there. One of our uh, good employees quit from my understanding because they were crapping in his office. <laughs> I mean, this, I mean, you can't make this up. And people are tripping over these animals when they're walking around the halls. And they're they're all over the place down there. Uh, a service animal, a service animal uh, has to be uh, registered. Uh, these uh, emotional support animals are not a registered as something. There's no certificate for that. And it costs about five to 10 grand to train these animals. They're not a pet. They cannot be a pet. And a lot of these animals are trained from the time they're little puppies. So uh, we have, this has been uh, malign, and one of the things that the American Disabilities Act really, and, and the people that support it, absolutely are dismayed with, uh, to the point of disgust, is the fact that people use these emotional support animals uh, as if it was a legal right to do that, and the people that really need these, the people that are crippled, the real people relying on these, uh, are then kind of looked at as askance because these other folks are abusing that right. Um, you can read this and it'll, it'll tell you about that in there. Um, so I had a meeting with the chief and the and city manager regarding barking dogs. And I, I really wanna, I'm not trying to build him up, but I wanna applaud the chief for what he did. And he came in and we were gonna have a meeting while well, Elizabeth came with him and had her emotional support dog with her. Our office is a holistic uh, uh, facility because we have people with multiple chemical sensitivities. We tell people, do not spray a day before this person comes in. We don't have anybody come in that has perfume on, and they all, all come in after this person comes in. And yet she just walks in with this dog. Now, the person we have that comes in that's a chemical sensitivity gal has some incredible problems. I, I feel badly for her. She has a certified uh, support animal. Um, Elizabeth's dog, I don't think it's certified or, or has is licensed. And she didn't ask to bring it in. She just brought it. And then she started, uh, uh, we, we got our, our business taken care of. It was all about the barking dogs. Chief did a good job. And uh, then she started talking about an issue that, uh, I had made, it actually sent a, a, a letter out, it wasn't to her, it was an email to one of our uh, elected officials and uh, who had shared that with her. And so she was going on and on about that. And I, because in the letter I said, you know, if you have an emotional support animal, you really probably need psychiatric care. Well, she took that to offense. This is true. What the heck are psychiatrists for? You have a, if this is, and we have multiple animals, we have a whole, a whole staff in there that are emotionally distraught to the point they have to have a dog with them. How can you run a business that way? It's news to me. So maybe we need to hire a psychiatrist. And I, I mean that seriously, if that's, if that's what we're going to have at City Hall, maybe we need to pay for that. So uh, anyway, then uh, she got fluffy because uh, she said, uh, she kept going, she said, well, the councilman said this and the councilman said that. And I said, I don't give a goddamn what the councilman said. Sure, please, I have to ask She got, question. I'm Thanks. sorry, that's what she said. So I'm gonna repeat it. And, and then she got up and she left the room. And as she left the room, she says, you're gonna be hearing from my attorney. Get out of town. She's gonna, uh, as a citizen that is complaining about an issue, she's going to uh, get her attorney this is way out of line. And, and the accusation was way out of line. So this is who we have as, as our city manager. Uh, thanks, no, uh, not my intent to uh, 
to admonish anyone. I'm just here to provide information. What they, the scale said about our community not standing up to uh, to a task is absolutely correct. We don't want to lose her in, as a community member or anybody else, and we want businesses to thrive. So it's we'll all work together. We're we're here to help out, not to not to criticize. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Next name on my list, Monica Niemeyer. I will have to lower this. I think everyone can see why. Um, Monica Niemeyer, I'm a resident of Sunnyside, been here the whole life, graduated class of 89. Woohoo, go, go uh, Grizzlies. Anyways, um, so the last time I talked here, I talked about all of us working together to try to find solutions. And I I do agree with um with Mayor, as I say, Mayor Dean, I'm just because I can't say your last name. With Mayor Dean, I'm very glad for the turnout. Um, it's a lot to hear, a lot to a lot to absorb, but it there are also issues and discussions that I think can be can be handled, can be tackled, can be managed. Everyone can be heard. I, I believe there's a way that we can do all this. Um, and I want to take a quick moment to thank um Tom. I, I wasn't aware that you were reading from the letter I sent to city, one of the city council members, so thank you. Um, really quick, an explanation of that. Um, when he was talking about the vendors, he was referring to the vendors at Cinco de Mayo that received a credit for um, being at the, the Cinco de Mayo prior, which was ran with ANA promotions. Um, they were given a, a credit, and to my understanding, when I first started watching this, you guys were told they were given a credit because they were left high and dry. Well, any promotions actually had a contract with those vendors. Now, I haven't asked for it, and I don't know if actually if any guys you if any of you have. I think it would be in the due diligence too. It would be a great way to put this at rest. But if you looked at that contract, I think it would outline, to my knowledge, that there were no refunds, but something was going to be worked out with them. It's also to my understanding when I sat in an LTAC meeting and I asked Jameson a list of those vendors that received it, um, a credit, she didn't know. She didn't have it. Well, then how do you know who you're crediting and who you're not crediting? So it, there's just a lot of questions. And I find that for whatever reason, and I don't understand why, because they're supposed to be, as I've said before, positions of knowledge and positions of resource, why council is finding out after the fact. It seems many times that you guys are finding out after the fact. That's not fair to you. That's not fair to the citizens. And I'm, I'm sure it makes for a very confusing city hall because then we're all asking for public records. You're trying to find out information for us. You're getting the information from them. They give it back to you and you guys give it to us. So I talked about a solution and I thought about, well, if I suggest that, maybe I should find a way to help with that solution. Here's my idea. The first Monday of every month is a workshop. Why don't we have a workshop to discuss this? It sounds like there's actually very a few, quite a few items on, on it, but mine is about LTAC. Why don't we have a workshop about LTAC? We have council here. We invite the LTAC committee. We have a couple, maybe three, three members from the community. I am asking that I be one of them. I have quite a few questions. I have resources and I have facts to support that. I've contacted JLARC. I've contacted the Department of Revenue. I've co contacted, I've just reached out to the Legislative Economic Development Department that actually oversees JLARC. I think I'll be well prepared in my answers and to help you guys find a solution. And so we can all get to it at the same time. I'm thinking if we're all put in the same room together, we can get all these answers that we need. And if not, at least we could compile a list that from there, you guys, one of you or all of you could then take those questions and ask MRSC or depending on the situation, ask for guidance from your council. I'm just trying to find a way. There's so much talking. Everybody's getting flustered. I can feel it. I can, you know, you can feel it in the room. There's a, there's a couple little breaks here and there that we all enjoy. But let's just all get to answers. And before we can get to answers, then let's all get to questions that we all agree are very good questions. And then from there, let's all work together to find those answers. So I'm asking for consideration of a workshop. Thank you. And thank you. And 
final name on there is uh, Mr. Benancio Garcia. All right, good evening. Um, I'm doing recording at this point because when I went to the website, it just amazed to me that basically every word I said um, last meeting managed to sound like a Charlie Brown skip session. So this is not the way that I normally like to get attention. I actually profane from that, but my heart and my duty has been to my country and the citizens of where I grew up and the area in which I reside. Also, that to make sure that my business tax dollars are going to make an impact here in the city of Sunnyside. Because right now, that market is only at the birthing stage of where we need to be. But we're going to make that baby rock. We're going to make that baby rock. And we're going to make a fantastic Sunnyside once a community comes. So, I am a combat veteran. I understand exhaustion, much hours out when you're out there doing your mission, not getting much rest or sleep because it is not the normal ideal situation to be in. Our law enforcement officers are not in that good position today. To put their health at risk, is not acceptable. That is due to leadership. Health means how you are your mind and your body, but also allowing our department heads to fully accountable in order to do their position correctly. You have to take a look at the former fire chief who questioned what happened to $3 million? That's a good question. Because he wanted accountability for the taxpayers' dollars. The taxpayers hire your lawyer, hire you, and you accepted that responsibility and hired the department heads. We want to ensure that if there are breaks in this dam, that we go ahead and we fix it. I also want to especially say thank you to the Sunnyside Police Department this weekend. They responded on an incident that occurred with me when somebody pulled out a weapon at my business. So I want to thank each and every one of the officers, and sir, thank you for the proper response. Things were handled simply. But are we going to risk not making sure that our officers aren't working overtime? Do we need to make sure that they don't get the proper amount of um, mental relaxation or spending time with their family? All of this is being ignored. Let's find what is important to us and make corrections. Monica gave a solution on the LTAC, wonderful solution. But we also have to go ahead at this point and make corrections or shots of what is needed to fix our department heads, our health and safety for our citizens. One of the reasons why I bring up health and mental stability is I can tell you there are a lot of questions in what our city leadership is today, and also who they hired. Your finance director once had a nervous breakdown. You didn't know that, but I can tell you, she told me that in the office. Jameson, she told me that. Not only that, I can tell you, the that she put in the city of Milton, city clerk fired, the people that she parted in the city of Napton, treasurer, fired. This is remarkable, a lot of her judgment. And these are the people that you have right now trying to take care of our citizens. This is not acceptable. 
I don't trust them more than I can throw them. I would not be here today if that was not the case. Now, you have a city attorney here. I tell you what your advice when it's time he gets paid by the taxpayers, and so do you. It's time that you do a forensic audit because we are requesting it. You yourself, Mayor, have said many times this is remarkable about the numbers that you see right here from the citizens of Sunnyside. This is only two sessions I've attended. Why is that? Because our citizens are not being heard. That is why. And they know something is wrong. Jameson, I'm not James, I'm sorry. Elizabeth herself asked for a forensic audit. Why? Because she wanted to have her name covered. What ordinances have been broken? What RCWs have been broken? What other things that are occurring? that have just been brought out into the light. I would not say this if it were not true. I say this because I care. We, the people, care right here, right now. We are in front of you. position because people trusted you in each and every one of these positions. And it should not be about protecting your salaries. It should not, and I know you don't get paid a lot, but the whole point is some of those people that are in these positions do get paid a lot of money. You have a person who's got a high school diploma running the government as the number two, basically. While you've been a of others that spent their life trying to do the right thing also. But yet, you had an overview done either by attorneys or third parties, but yet no stopping at their decision making. That is incredibly unbelievable. If you care about what is to happen and the right thing to happen, a hundred thousand dollar audit is a drop in the bucket when you really take a look on what transactions have occurred, especially when the proof is in the pudding of three million plus dollars from the general fund to the enterprise fund. This is nothing to close your eyes at. This is not about politics. I am here because I care. I am here and so are they. These are people that contribute to our tax paying budget, who have people that they hire for their businesses and give services for what they do in what is needed for our city. You know, for over 40 years, downtown Sunnyside has been a dinosaur on what to do in with the people here. And it has been done. This city should be a shining bright light for the rest of the country to look at. This city should be an all-American city far from that, from the safety to me being there at the Cinco de Mayo shooting, saving somebody's life, to your folks right in front of you asking for the right thing to happen, and young kids worried, now traumatized, whether they have a safe home, a safe street, a safe public, when do you hear us? When do you go ahead and say, this is not about keeping somebody we like? This is about the people that put me in this position to ensure the safety and health of our community and our city management. We are talking about dogs? Dogs? Really? And you're closing your eyes right in front of you when you go ahead and we walk through those doors at the point of time of opening and closing? Dogs? This is ridiculous. 
There's many things that have occurred within the last couple of years. When you take that vote, you don't take it because you like somebody. You take it because you took an oath to the Constitution of the United States and ethical purposes to make that difference. People ask to do what's wrong with the world. But when you put in a position of leadership, you fix what's wrong. You come into that position saying, what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? When you start a business, the first question you want to know is, how much money do you want to make so then I can provide the services to every person that comes through those doors? You see those welcome signs at Sunnyside? You see them on the exit signs? Welcome to Sunnyside. If you keep running your business this way, you don't have to worry about opening because it will be a dinosaur like downtown is right now that's been for the last 30 years. We of the people that are asking for a forensic audit take a very sound look of what is happening in front of you today. And I will assure you, every one of you, and anybody else that is not voted in, I will ensure that we will get this remedy. And those that are on that train, because I am born and raised here, and I bled Sunnyside. Even when I was in combat, I saw Sunnyside out there. We are special. We have a beautiful community. We should be leading the rest of the United States of America and what a good community is. You, know, you hear Monica say, we are in the class of 89? Awesome. Well, I feel it. I'm a grizzly the day I die. But here's the thing. Have you forgotten that from the positions you're in today? Now, I'm going to go through some of the speech that I went through today and some of the things that need to be remedied. And this is coming from the people. It is not coming from lawyers or third party citizens, because guess what? You paid them. They're paying you. And they took the money from the taxpayers for. So they need to listen up also. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe. Is it right there? I'm bad. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Sorry about that. The citizens request for a forensic audit of our city of Sunnyside's financial health. Trust must be regained between the government and its people here. Our 40th president, Ronald Reagan, coined the phrase, trust and verify, during the Cold War against the Soviet Union. City of Sunnyside has had many changes in leadership within the current administration, running government. Example, judge replaced, prosecutor replaced, public defender replaced, city attorney replaced, finance director, supervisor replaced, parks and recreation supervisor replaced, police chief replaced, fire chief replaced, parks commander replaced, police sergeant replaced, assistant fire chief replaced, public works director replaced, assistant public works director replaced. Now the city manager was given authority for emergency to make dollar commitments of $50,000. That should have never occurred. Any emergency, we would be asking for help if it was that bad. And anything that needs to be fixed isn't gonna happen that quickly. How many $50,000 checks were made possibly to all 13 of those mentioned replaced employees? costing the city a possible $650,000. Also, your tax increase for all of them that got unemployment. Most of the citizens aren't aware of this, or maybe not even you, but when you go ahead and have a city and fire, or not even fire, have one replaced, and they go and they're eligible for unemployment, guess what happens to the city um, taxes? They go up. 
because you were at fault in letting an employee go. And that doesn't come down for a very long time, if any. Those are some of the consequences, not including possible $650,000. I want the city and the folks to understand, please watch the document on Rita Crudwell, all the queen's horses, a city treasurer, a state who st stole $53 million, whether it was through grants or whether it was through loans, or, you know, it's amazing how Mr. Reyes was able to go ahead and get all this money for services of what that we still don't know in that type of scheme. Ain't that amazing how it kind of co coincides with what we're talking about here? You should watch it. A city, you also can contact the Washington State Auditor's Office and file a report of concern. Phone number 509-454-7848. You also go to the website of the State Auditor's Office, sao.wa.gov. Areas of concern are fit financial health report. Areas of concern are the codes 400. And we've been talking about those. Garbage, sewer, storm work, amongst many other codes. These are codes of concern. I hope today that it's just more than just a discussion of how we're going to remedy this. I hope today that you understand that this just may be one battle because I hope that you take a vote very soon to do what you know is right. Because you said, and you rose your hand to protect our constitution. You rose your hand to do the ethical thing. And we, the people, trusted you. We need your help to do the right thing now. Elizabeth was right here and said, we'll do a forensic audit. Right here. Well, that's great bravado, but it needs to be done. So I concur with her on that. And if I need to eat humble pie, if I am wrong, so be it. I don't have a problem doing that. But what I say is true, or lawyers wouldn't have to be involved so much in what is occurring today. It is time to remember we pay your salaries and we put you in those positions that you wanted to be put in, that you fought to be put in. Then fight for the right thing. Because apparently you don't have a problem fighting, fight, letting go or replacing anyone or even lawyers. And if they're not doing the service, you replace them all to you rebuild it and you regain the people's trust. God bless you. All right, thank you everybody. Obviously there's been a lot thrown at us this evening. And if we were gonna try to respond to all of that, we'd be here for the rest of the night under ordinance. We can only have a meeting that lasts for three hours. So I will say this, all of your questions have answers and we will be happy to provide those answers. We have taken notes in the areas that pertain to each of us. I don't know how many of you know that council had an executive session two days after the last council meeting where we discussed the items that were brought forward by you as individuals. I've also had meetings with different individuals since that time where I've discussed different ideas and different um, possibilities. I don't know what other council members have had as far as meetings or emails or any of that sort of stuff, because as council under state law, we're not allowed to have meetings that are not publicly noticed. So we cannot meet in secret. Um, we also all pay attention, even though we don't respond to what's being posted on social media, but we see it. Um, I did request that those who have specific charges to bring against the city that they give us documentation. We cannot work off of any kind of hearsay that just becomes he said, she said, 
and we can go nowhere with that. If somebody hands us documentation, I can go back or any of us can go back and look at anything that is out there, anything that needs to be examined and changed. Keep in mind that each and every one of us as council members live in Sunnyside, and most of us have most of our lives. We have no reason, there is no benefit for us to do anything that is out of line. We want what's best for Sunnyside as well. I noticed that some of you on your reasons, uh, one of you put in here corruption in city council. Um, if you're going to allege that, um, please prove it. Because if there is some sort of corruption going on where other council members are making a whole bunch of money, I am 10 years behind. And I want my share. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but there are answers. Our budget is a public document by law. We are in the budget season right now where we must, by law, prepare a balanced budget for the next year. And you are welcome to be a part of that. We have two public hearings between now and the end of November. Please come and participate. But our last year's, the current year's budget is also an open book. Take a look at it. A check register. We're going to approve checks that were written and money transfers this evening. That is also available. Go to the city website, meetings, click on the packet. That check register is there. That's exactly what we see. All right. Ask questions, make public records requests. By law, we have to answer those. By law, we have a, an employee at City Hall tasked with that job. We don't want corruption in this city either. Some of these things, you've mentioned things like police officers and animal control. We have budgeted for those. Um, the struggle is getting people to apply because we are not the only community who wants animal control and police officers. And there's quite a bit of competition for those jobs or for those people. And there's a limited number of applicants around the state. But we're working at it. We have approved it. We just need to get the people in there. So if you know somebody, um, send them our way. I do want to finish this section with just a quote that just happened to come up yesterday and I thought was very apt. And I can see that it is still very apt because of the people shaking their heads at what I say. It says, to those who believe, no proof is necessary. To those who do not, no proof is enough. I have been told by at least one of you that you don't trust anything that comes from any department head or any council member in this city. I don't know what to do about that. If you can find something, I challenge you to find it. Bring it to us. Make us clean it up. Show us documentation. I don't care which department head which staff member you talk to, or which council member. I challenge you to find it. Or in the words of Greta Thunberg, or whatever, how, however you pronounce her name, I dare you, get out there and examine our budget, examine our finances, and show us where we are being corrupt. All right? I am happy to meet with you. My phone number is on the webpage. Call me. All right, everybody have a pencil? This is my phone number. As Dr. Stevens knows, I will stop my job and I will stand outside and talk to him for 30 minutes. My phone number is as follows, 509-952-4456. You can text me, you can call me. If those numbers are up. I mean, other council members, their numbers are up there. They're reachable. Their emails are up there. If not, that will be corrected. All right. I am going to say that we need to take a recess for a couple of minutes. We have been over an hour in public comment. And so I'm going to suggest that we take a five-minute recess, stretch our legs. We will reconvene at 8.01. Thank you. The restroom. Oh, okay. Attorney, um, there's been requests for what has been, I guess, phrased as a forensic audit that you're requiring for the city. A forensic audit, self audit, is not possible. A forensic audit is instituted by a governmental agency by and for another governmental agency or a larger corporation that the government's investigating. So 
for the city to institute an audit, they can do their own civil audit if they choose to do so. They can't institute a forensic audit against themselves. No, you can keep saying out loud if you want. I understand that. What I'm telling you is legally, the city cannot do its own forensic audit. They can do their own civil audit at this point. That is very possible. But a forensic audit is instituted by a governmental entity against another governmental entity or a larger corporation. So an audit is possible, but a forensic audit of it yourself is not legally possible to do. Okay, we are we are in session. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, we can't start a dialogue back and forth because we are way behind on our agenda as it is. But we are trying to figure out the best way and the most effective way to audit ourselves, okay? So we need to move on and please stick around. You may talk to the attorney afterwards. You may talk to any council member afterwards, but we need to move on. Next item on our agenda is our consent agenda. The consent agenda consists of the following. Approve the minutes of the September 11, 20, 2023 regular meeting. Approve the minutes of September 14, 2023 regular meeting or special meeting. Payroll vouchers, approve payroll vouchers 119379 through 119388 and wire transfers as listed for $559,858.12 for the period ending September 11, 2023. Claim vouchers, approve claim voucher numbers 107415 through 107466 and wire transfers as listed for $642,497.66 for the period, in, on, period ending on September 13, 2023. Council, is there any item from the consent agenda you wish to remove for discussion? Hearing none, what is the desire, Council, on the consent agenda? Move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. We've had a motion by Councilor Beeler, seconded by Councilor Ripley to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there any debate on this item? <clears throat> Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. I to vote aye. Motion carries. Active agenda. Active agenda consists of the following. Item A, the Phillips Property Annexation, partial number 231032-31402. Consider approving a resolution of the City Council of the City of Sunnyside, Washington, accepting notice of intention to commence annexation, setting conditions, authorizing submission of petition, and referring to a hearing body. And Mr. Martin. Good evening, City Council. So I have before you something that shouldn't be too unfamiliar, but uh, I have a, a application from Yolanda Phillips to annex approximately 2.3 acres into the city of Sunnyside and um, re received the application from her. Um, this is simply council looking, reviewing the, the, the property is located at the south, southeast corner of 241 and Factory Road. Um, so it's just on the um, edge of the east side of the city. Um, so this is basically um, city council looking at the parcel, determining whether or not they want to move forward with uh, city staff reviewing this property and taking it to the next public hearing and then submitting it to the boundary review board um, to be annexed eventually into the city. So tonight I'm asking you to, to um, uh, move uh, approve the resolution beginning the annexation of the property and and I have I'm here for any questions that you may have. Council questions or comments for Mr. Martin. This is just a single resident area. Yeah, this, this is just a property. It's 2.3 acres. It has one house on it right now. I believe she wants to bring it in and maybe subdivide it into two or three lots eventually, um, and and uh, maybe put put a, a family member's residence to the on the northern part part of her parcel. I think that's about it. And water and sewer service is already at the edge of our property. So it makes some sense. Further questions or comments? Mr. Farmer. County zoning, it does not allow for that to happen. Is that correct? It has some weird restrictions and regulations depending on where it's at. I don't know exactly the county's structure on this property. I would have to look it up. But typically they have um, a little bit harder regulations when it comes to making smaller parcels. And this might fall into that category. Well, I went out and looked at the property and those people took care of their property and it's just going to help the city side. It's going to help the value of their property being in the city of Sunnyside. So I think we should go forward with it. 
Further comments? <clears throat> All right, hearing no comments, what is the desire of council on this item? Move to approve. All second. Motion by Councillor Beeler, second by Councillor Hicks to approve a resolution of the City of Council of, City of Sunnyside, Washington, accepting notice of intention to commence annexation, setting conditions, authorizing submission of petition, and referring to a hearing body. Is there a debate on this item? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. I too vote aye. Motion carries. Next item, item B, Sunnyside Development Group. This is a closed record hearing. It's different than a public hearing. Sunnyside Developer Group LLC Master Plan Development consider approving a resolution adopting the hearing examiner's findings and recommended conditions of approval for a preliminary short plat master plan develop overlay zone and plan development permit application submitted by the Sunnyside Development Group LLC. Here and after developer and authorizing the developer to draft and submit a development agreement to the city council. <laughs> This closed record decision hearing is being on adopting the hearing examiner's findings and recommended conditions of approval for a preliminary short plat, master plan development overlay zone, plan development permit applications, and authorizing the developer to draft and submit a develop agreement and adopt the attached resolutions. Yes, I know I read the same thing twice, but part of it is a necessary script. Appearance of fairness disclosures. The concern is that this hearing be fair in form and substance as well as appearance. Council members, do any of you have a conflict of interest concerning this issue? Do any of you stand to gain or lose any financial benefit as a result of the outcome of this hearing? If your answer is yes, please speak now. Council members, can you hear and consider this in a fair and objective manner? If your answer is no, please speak now. Audience member, at this time, we would ask the audience if there's any objections to my participation or any other council members' participation in these proceedings. If there are, please approach the microphone, state your name and state your objection. All right, this closed record decision hearing is now open at 8.09 p.m. Hearing procedure will be as follows. First, we'll get a report from staff. Um, then we'll get, uh, I'll give an opportunity for the applicant to speak and then public comment, but public comment must be limited to existing information. We cannot introduce new information at this public comment hearing. All right, so staff report, oh. Mr. Martin. Oh, good evening once again, City Council, Trevor Martin, Community and Economic Development Director for the City of Sunnyside, Washington. So tonight I have before you a, a the, um, the City of Sunnyside received a master plan development application, short plat application and a request for a master plan development overlay designation from the Sunnyside Development Group to construct a approximately 384 units over three phases in the B2 uh, commercial general commercial zoning district. Um, there were several public hearings held for this. The final public hearing was, was held on, uh, open public hearing was held on August 16th, 2023. The testimony has been incorporated into the staff report um, that was, or not staff report, the hearing examiner recommendation. Um, there, I don't know, 48 pages of hearing examiner findings and recommendation here. Um, and so I have um, I went through the staff report or the they keep saying staff report because that's what I'm used to, but um, I went through the hearing examiner recommendations and um, I, staff it concurs with um, just about everything that the hearing examiner has said, everything that was presented. Um, no major issues, except for there's one small spot where um, we, there was a, a condition, and um, um, I'm going to ask council just to consider this. There's, um, this is, you know, at your consideration, but one of the conditions in the, um, on page 47, number seven, is an eight-foot high solid block wall should be constructed at, um, at each phase of the development where it abuts the adjacent property on the east and west sides. Um, Typically, so this, this an eight foot high solid block wall doesn't exist anywhere in the city of Sunnyside. Um, I have, a, there's, and there's no specific site screening requirements in our municipal code. However, during, during the public hearing, there were multiple comments delivered on screening. Um, and um, I would ask for consideration, uh, some, some other thoughts and consideration on this item. Um, because we don't have specific 
site screening requirements to maybe alter this standard. I'm requesting city council consider and maybe alter the standard to something something else, uh, maybe arborvita that become eight feet tall with with site with um, with fencing uh, that's six feet tall. Arbor when an arborvita that become eight feet tall over the course of two or three years, or a, a six foot tall fence because we do again it's it seems a bit compoundish i don't know many many cities that uh, even allow eight foot tall um, um, fences in 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 residential areas so that would be my one consideration other than that um i'm here for questions if you if you have anything um staff members <laughs> with the hearing examiner and at the end of this uh, this um I'm asking you to consider to move to approve the resolution adopting the hearing examiner's findings and recommendation. Thank you, sir. Is the applicant available? Please state your name and city of residence and make your comments. <laughs> Hello. Is this a good height? Perfect. Um, good evening, our honorable mayor and members of city council. My name is Emily Weimer with AHBL. We are out of Pasco, and I am representing the applicant today. Most of my work is for cities and counties around Eastern Washington as a city planner. Uh, I am here, our applicants, um, one of them is a local builder who grew up in the Valley and has completed a lot of projects around town. So we are no strangers to this market, this area, we are here. I'd first like to thank staff for uh, their support along the way in bringing this project to you tonight. Uh, just a quick overview. This is an infill development proposal for up to 384 new housing opportunities. This is market rate housing, and it's designed to be an elevated product um, to provide a to meet a much needed housing need in the city. We are proposing this high quality product, which includes landscaping, recreational opportunities, and enhanced buffers beyond what's normally required by city code. In our proposed development agreement, we address mitigation for the real or perceived impacts to those neighboring properties. There are adequate facilities and services available to serve the property. And this proposal is supported by numerous goals uh, in the city's comprehensive plan and by the Washington State Growth Management Act. Uh, so we are respectfully requesting that the council consider removing two suggested conditions of approval in that um, in the packet that were added by the hearing examiner, not re recommended by staff initially to the hearing examiner. Uh, and those two are, the first one is that eight foot wall that um, your director brought up on the two sides of the property. And secondly, this requirement to conduct a transportation impact analysis. And those are suggested conditions B7 and two. So on the screen right now, two is the TIA, seven is an eight foot wall. So I'll start with the wall. Uh, we did not find su uh, sufficient findings within that recommendation to warrant an eight foot wall. Uh, it's subjective. It says it would be safer than our proposal of a wrought iron wall, uh, excuse me, a wrought iron fence. Additionally, it's excessive. Fences over six feet in height require a building permit for construction. That adds an additional permit requirement. A lot of cities around Eastern Washington don't even allow fences in residential areas that are above six feet tall. Uh, as your director mentioned, it's nowhere in your code to require fencing around residential or other types of development. Other apartment complexes around town do not have the same requirement. So we see that it's arbitrary and capricious. Uh, additionally, an eight foot wall will not effectively block any um, noise concerns, which was one of the stated concerns for uh, requiring a block wall. We acknowledge that there may be noise concerns, and so we have already mitigated that 
by enhancing the setbacks and have moved the residential buildings away from that eastern side um, to diffuse those potential conflicts. Um, earlier tonight, we heard concerns about graffiti around town. This would be providing a blank canvas for um, people who want, feel the need to do that. Um, additionally, the site is zone B2. So in that zone, the development rights of this property allow us to build much more intensive uses such as a hotel, an outdoor theater, or car wash, or even a club outright. So it wouldn't go through this public process and there wouldn't be any kind of fencing or setbacks. Um, so we are going above and beyond um, that process. Um, a lot of people think an eight foot wall is off-putting. It's unsightly and unwelcoming. It reminds me of jails and compounds and it's not part of a welcoming residential area that we would like to create. Um, and so we, there are a few ideas that we had um, in order to remove that eight foot wall requirement. Um, we are proposing to keep our original plans of the uh, wrought iron fencing. Not only is it more aesthetically pleasing, um, it can help reduce crime by providing added visibility. Uh, we can somehow waive our rights to noise complaints if that's a concern, either as a plant note, so note on the face of the plant, recognizing that this um, residential area is coming in next to an existing industrial area, and so noise impacts may occur. You often see this next to airports. Um, people still can build houses there. They just have to recognize that there could be some noise impacts. Um, additionally, we could also put a note in their development agreement stating that we acknowledge there could be future um, noise concerns. Secondly, I'd like to talk about the transportation impact analysis requirement. Um, we do acknowledge that your code provides this opportunity to, for the city to require a traffic study, um, but here's why we don't think it's necessary and is actually burdensome for this housing project. Um, staff has already conducted concurrency review. So if you look at the original staff recommendation to the hearing examiner, they stated that transportation concurrency review has been satisfied. So staff worked with the Yakima Valley Council of Governments, which is the city's MPO, RTPO, which is federally mandated and funded transportation planning agency for um, Yakima County. And so they used their traffic demand modeling software to look at the impacts of this project. And so this region-wide travel demand model is used for a wide range of planning projects, activities, and includes inventories of the roadway facilities, existing land uses, shopping, schools, and employment, in the entire Yakima County. Um, so staff has stated that the city uses this model for a number of purposes, including regular adjustments to the city's TIP, your transportation improvement program. Uh, so we feel if the city feels comfortable using it for their analysis, um, we think we should be able to use it for this project. Additionally, um, we have to ask, what would this TIA even tell us? And it's stuff we already know. Um, it will not indicate that any improvements are needed in this area. The volumes, traffic volumes, are just not there. And so we have to ask why we should complete this costly study when we already have the data from your government agency. So in conclusion, TIA is simply not warranted um, and it's not supported by the proposed findings. Um, so I thank staff and council for your consideration of um, possibly removing a TIA and the eight foot wall requirement. But in conclusion, we are happy with the, uh, all the other listing conditions um, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we will ask you to come back to the microphone during the time where council can ask some questions. So thank you for that. 
At this time, we will hear some public comments. And again, please do not introduce new information. This is all information that you've already seen. We cannot be introducing new information. So Mr. Dolan, you're about leaping out of your chair, so I'm going to let you go first. Well, that was enlightening. Um, what I'd like to request is a, I mean, you've heard all this before. I would like to request a letter um, explaining to me why um, the Planning Commission was removed from this when what we did was bring forward uh, concerns of the people that live by there, a lot of people that live by there that are going to experience um, this new project. Um, I did recommend to the hearing examiner that they put up a couple of nice big long sound walls so that you uh, separate a fabrication shop, which I basically have been in for 20, almost 25 years teaching high school kids how to weld things and cut things and put things together. And uh, it's gonna be right next door. So you have all these people living here and you have all these people working here. And it's, I personally, I think it's a recipe for disaster, but I would like a letter. Maybe Trevor could put together something to me, explain why we were pulled from there and why were we, we were accused of putting the city in danger of a lawsuit I mean, after what's been going on here, it's like, well, it seems like the day-to-day -day operations around here to me. I think that um, we we deserve that as count as uh, as planning commission members. We deserve some kind of an explanation why our services aren't needed when we put in our own time. And like I stated earlier, it, the pay is really good, but you know, hey. Um, I, I think that we deserve an explanation why we were just taken out of the picture for this um, just because we brought forward all the concerns of the city um, residents that live there. I mean, uh, instead of working it out, we, we request, I requested that the builders show up and give us an idea of what was coming. And um, that way the, all the people that filled this room for three meetings would know exactly what they had planned and make, you know, work together and say, I think it's great to provide more housing. We need it really badly. I don't have any problem with the project other than now we're talking about taking away the traffic study. It's done by a computer and other people that don't even live here. Oh, you know, you guys don't have the, the traffic that um, would warrant this. This is coming from someone that lives in Tri-Cities. I, I don't agree with it at all. Take a take a drive down that road anytime. I would I did Sunday, late Sunday afternoon, and I was trading mirrors with people that were um they had to be doing 60. Outlook Road is a dangerous place. And when we get ready to put this in, how are you going to get that ladder truck in there to address a three-story full in, fully engulfed building? I, I guess that's going to be up to Cameron, but um making those turns making those turns after building on ramps to freeways myself and being on those crews we need a little more room out there especially for a truck like that um it says well it's all compliant compliant for where this is a special situation take a bit a little closer look at it but i really would like an explanation in writing why the planning commission was pulled from this project thank you very much thank you sir other public comment? Ms. Moore and then Ms. Boss. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you for your consideration in this project. Um, I had spoken on this a few times. I'll make this really quick. You're talking about 384 apartments, uh, possibly two cars per apartment. That's 768 cars traveling on Outlook Road and Yakima Valley Highway. I have problems believing the computer did a good job of analyzing the traffic. It's going to, it's going to really impact the traffic immensely. You then have about 736 kids. If there's two kids per apartment, um, 50 kids fit on a bus. So that's almost 15 to 16 buses going in and out twice a day. Um, I also had proposed that they cut the project in half. The reason for that is to make room for parking. At this point, there's only 1.4 parking spaces per unit. That's not enough. What happens at birthday parties, Christmas, Thanksgiving, you name it, the guns are gonna come out and people are gonna start fighting over parking spaces. Um, 
I've also requested that they put in a 24 hour two man security specifically to relieve our police department. There's a lot of people in one small space. They're gonna be over there all the time. I've also suggested that they remove the pool. Our swimming pool here now at our city is uh, not doing well. So there's 736 kids right there, new customers that can work, swim right in our swimming pool here in Sunnyside. Um, not to mention the liability, the possible drownings, children, people not watching their kids, you name it, all kinds of problems come with swimming pools. Uh, that's it. I just I just think it's a big project. We, we need places for people to live. We need nice places. I still recommend the brick wall. Um, we have predators in the city uh, coming from other areas. We don't need to see them uh, seeing all these children in there playing. Um, we don't need their, their sports equipment flying out the gates into the highways, into the roads. Um, animals that they may have running through the out of the fences. I just think a brick wall is a good idea. The highest we can go. I would, I love the eight feet, but I'll take six. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Boss. I do have a couple questions. If this does go in, who's going to monitor it? I used to do real estate. I ran one of the biggest property managers in Central Grand. Are they going to be monitoring how many people are living in each unit? By law in Oregon, it is two people per room. That's including the living room. Is there going to be walkthroughs every other month to make sure it's being kept up, being clean, that there's not 10 other family members moving in? And I guess my biggest thing is, like, I think this is a recipe for disaster. It's low income. They should be thankful for having a house over, a roof over their head, a place to live until they get on their feet. There is no need for a rec hall. There is no need for a swimming pool. Let the kids go outside and play. That's what, how we grew up. We didn't have that stuff. I still don't have that stuff. Why are our tax dollars going to that? There is no need for that. So I just want to see who is going to be monitoring this. And I do not agree with that extracurricular stuff. I am opposed to that. And I will do whatever I can to stop that. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comment? Hearing none, I'd like to have the applicant uh, please step up to the microphone again. And this way, council has an opportunity to ask questions to staff and to our applicants. So council members, do you have questions or comments that you would like to make on this item? We'll start with Mr. Beeler. Not at this time. Okay, Mr. Hicks. Uh, my biggest question would be parking. If just living in the Valley, you know, it's three to four cars per household at a minimum, if there's only one and a half spaces or one in less than half, where are these extra cars gonna go? That's a great question. So the, your parking minimums are one, are one um, parking space per unit. So we're already providing about 1.5. So we looked at your minimum required parking and thought we can boost that up. So we are already providing in excess of what the city has deemed appropriate. Specifically, 148 units more. Okay, Mr. Hicks, satisfy your question? Okay. Ms. Ripley? Not at this time. Mr. Farmer? I, uh, I agree with the need for the complex. I have an issue with the traffic study. Uh, not to run anything down but our city has been very lax in doing traffic studies and making the road bigger uh, for increased traffic. And I, and I, and I just see, I just see an abortion happening here. Uh, it, it's all these cars on, on a little road. It, it's just not, it, it's not safe and it's not, uh, it's not doable. I don't think, uh, I have never lived next to a building like that or a, a business like a business that makes a lot of noise, but I have visited people who have. And it's not fun to live next to one of those places where you hear all the, all the noise. Uh, I, 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 I have an issue uh, with the fans. I think we need the fans for sure. Uh, so those are, those are my big two issues and then throw in the parking, uh, 
two cars in 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 a in a, in an apartment is I mean mother and father and and then there's a kid. Uh, I could see three cars or four cars spaces uh, needed in in a, in an apartment building. So uh, those those are my thoughts. Mr. Deputy Mayor. Nothing at this time, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. So I have a couple of questions. I took a few notes as you were talking. Um, the term has come up low income several times, um, but you later on, you earlier mentioned um, an elevated project. So is this a low income apartment complex? No, uh, this is market rate. So what does that mean? Uh, do you have any idea? So low low income means a very specific thing per law. Uh, this is this is not Section Eight housing, Mr. Mayor. Understood. I want them to define it for the audience. Thanks, sir. It's a range of you know, one bedroom, two bedroom. It's a mix of nicer apartments. So you know, everybody has different tastes, but this will be a little above a general what you think of a general apartment complex. Okay, so. What you're saying, this is going to chart. This this is a, a professional level college graduates, young married, small families uh, who are expected to live there, and they're going to pay a normal rent. Thank you. Yes. Okay. That's our okay. Just wanted to make sure everybody is clear on this because low income is something different, and that is often you know subsidized housing, and that you know that's a whole different world. All right, will this be a gated complex? No, we have not proposed any gates. Okay, curious about that. So um, let's see, what else have I got here? I guess my comment is traffic will definitely increase. And I'm not sure how much of it is on the backs of the developers to fix that. I drove down Yakima Valley Highway today. Um, both Yakima Valley Highway and Outlook Road are going to require massive improvements. Yakima Valley Highway is already almost to the point of needing a center turn lane. Um, Outlook Road is going to get to that point very quickly. The upside of increasing the traffic is traffic will slow down on Outlook Road. The racing will no longer be an option there because there's just that many cars going on the road. However, it is going to increase problems at stop sign at Schoon Road and Outlook Road. It's going to increase problems at Maple Grove. Uh, Maple Grove, Yakima Valley Highway, Swan Road, Yakima Valley Highway. We will have to be proactive. And I don't know if this falls, I think this falls on the city to uh, to be thinking ahead here. Um, roundabouts, four-way stops, those types of things need to be on the table to get ahead of that. Um, ironically, I got home last night late and I read this. I spent last week in Northern Phoenix in a three bedroom apartment with my daughter, her husband, her two boys, it's a three bedroom apartment and I don't think it's quite a thousand square feet. It's a gated apartment complex on a very busy street. It's on an intersection. On one side of the complex is some sort of an implement dealership. On another side across the street, they're building warehouses with construction equipment. And it just doesn't feel like a very residential friendly neighborhood, however, They've got this beautiful complex with a pool and a weight room and a conference center and work areas. And um, yeah, it it works somehow. But I'm concerned that Northern Phoenix and the people who live in that complex are not the same people who will be living in the complex in Sunnyside. And so I am concerned about police calls and I am concerned about additional cars. I don't know if they're going to be paying for the, their parking spot or if there's some sort of plan like that. I know my daughter and her husband have two cars and my daughter doesn't work. She's a stay-at-home mom. So there's two cars and I can almost assume that that's going to be the case for most families. So there's my concern. Um, if a single person living in an apartment by himself only has one car, that's fine. But you know, at my house, I have five right now which is absurd, but I guess those are my concerns. So I, I did wanna find out if this is gated and gated works great. I feel pretty good about that. The fencing issue, 
yeah, if they know there's going to be noise, then they can't say anything about it. But if they wake up early in the morning and somebody's running a grinder, yeah, kids aren't going to be sleeping. So, all right. Further questions or comments? Just wanted to have you say something about this. It was uh, brought up by somebody that this is not how we should spend our tax dollars. Tax dollars not spending on this at all? No. That's what I thought. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. If there's no further comment, this closed record decision hearing is now closed as of 837. All right, Council, we've had a bunch of information handed to us. You've had the opportunity over the weekend to read all the information that was presented. What is the desire of Council on this item? Our, what, are, what are we voting on? Are we Approving. voting on the wall? Are we voting on traffic study? Are we voting right. on more parking? Let, uh, we need, I need to know what we're voting on okay. before I vote. And, What's proposed before us, Mr. Martin, is what you read. So, our, so go ahead and read that back to us. Yes, absolutely. Sorry, got all my stuff in the pile. So we are, or you are, sorry, the, the council is um, considering a resolution to adopt the hearing examiner's findings and approve the preliminary short plat, master plan development overlay zone, plan and plan development permit applications submitted by Sunnyside Development Group LLC. So in this, you are you are adopting um, the hearing examiner's findings as your own and improving the resol resolution to move forward with this. If there is any item within the hearing examiner's findings, city council may look at those findings, change them, but they also need to produce their own findings on why they want those items changed. So um, such things as uh, you mentioned traffic, um, if, or not traffic, um, you mentioned parking. Um, and so, so this is uh, just, just my, my, my thought, but um, if you're going to change the amount of parking spaces, you will have to come up with a finding on why the, 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 the developer has already provided um, an abundance of parking spaces. You will have to provide a reason why the number of parking spaces they have not provided is uh, inadequate and um, uh, and, and adopt that as your council finding. So that's just an example. So, okay. So the, the question is, uh, I didn't did not hear, uh, did not understand traffic, and and uh, eight foot uh, wall. Mm -hmm. Are are they required in the hearing examiner's findings? Right. They are. So if we so if we pass it, those are going to be included. Correct. If you adopt it as is, it's that those items are in there. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we were being asked is to decide, are we going to approve the hearing examiner's findings as is, or are we going to recommend changes? And if so, we have to justify those changes. It means we have to come up with our own fund, our own findings. Didn't all this have been done before it came to this, to us tonight? It, it, it has it, been done. Technically it has been done. Okay. Two issues that they're still wanting to re be removed. Therefore, each party wants something changed. You're correct, sir. Okay. It's up to us if we decide whether we want to adopt it as is or make some of the recommended changes, whether we take away the traffic study, the wall, or if we add more parking spaces, then we would be voting against this moving forward. If we're okay with what the findings are, then we vote to move this forward. So back to the question, what is the desire of council on this item? Well, we hired the hearing examiner and he's supposed to be the top notch and he knows what we're supposed to do. So uh, I think we need to follow what we hired him to do. I think we need to go ahead and approve this. So are you making a motion, sir? My motion is to go ahead and approve it as it is before us tonight. This is Deputy Mayor. I'll second that. All right, so we have a motion by Councilor Beeler, a second by Deputy Mayor Ristucci to approve the resolution adopting the hearing examiner's findings and recommended conditions of approval for a preliminary short plat, master plan development overlay zone, and plan development permit application submitted by Sunnyside Development Group. 
and authorizing the developer to draft and submit a development agreement to the city council. Is there debate on this item? And we have one comment and that is, as long as I've been on council, I've been hearing that there is a shortage of decent housing in Sunnyside. And we all can agree on that. The trouble comes when we don't agree on what the solution to the problem is. And that's what we're looking at here. Um, so that's my only comment. If there's no further debate, all in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, no. I two vote aye, motion passes. All right. Item C, AWC insurance for non-represented police and fire employees. Consider approving a resolution of the City Council of the City of Sunnyside, Washington, approving an employer master participation agreement between the City of Sunnyside and AWC Benefit Trust, and authorizing the City Manager to sign the agreement on behalf of the City. Ms. Horner, are you the person selected for this one? Okay, go ahead and give your staff report now. Yes, thank you. Uh, the city was notified at the end of August regarding the Teamsters Welfare Trust's decision not to offer uh, continued insurance to people who are not members of the Teamsters. And so we have two unions, the IAFF, the Guild, and all of our non-represented staff that are currently covered on the Teamsters plan that will be losing coverage with the Teamsters effective January 1st of 2024. Um, the city manager has previously worked with Association of Washington Cities for insurance. Um, they're a well-respected provider. Um, and she initially wanted to get the non-rep staff onto that plan. Um, they did offer to be able to put all three units on there. And I am, I am, Cognizant of the, the union's request to bargain the issue, um, the city's main concern right now is that bargaining can take a while, so we would like to get something in place so that none of our staff loses coverage or has to go on COBRA effective January 1st, 2024. There's no obligation that either of the groups stay on this plan, but and, and we would hope that we would get bargaining done quickly um, on the off chance that we didn't having the those groups listed on the master agreement would allow us to temporarily put this this insurance coverage in place for them as well. Um, I I understand that the unions have requested to table the item. If that is something that the council is considering, I would request that instead of tabling the item, perhaps approving an amended uh, master agreement that removes both of those units from the what you're authorizing the city manager to sign um, because delaying the process any further just puts, it, it does take a while to get insurance in place and having all of the staff fill in and provide all the documentation that they need to do. So I'm willing to take questions. Council, questions for Ms. Horner. We do have three months till the end of the year and I know you can't do it at the last minute, but is there some room to, to give them some time, maybe a 30 day to give them time to look at it and to meet with you? Um, we we can do that. And we did reach out to AWC based on um, the union's request to bargain and asked whether or not we should delay. Their suggestion was to do this just because the paperwork and the process can take time. And so, but it is the option of the council what you decide to authorize the city manager to do. As I said, there's no obligation that any of these that either of the unions are required to stay on this insurance simply by the city manager signing the master agreement. If the if either of the units bargained with the city to provide a different coverage, we would bring this master plan back and remove them. And um, AWC would remove them from coverage and we would put the new coverage in place. Really, one of the reasons we want to keep them on here is just in case bargaining takes a while, and it can take a while. I mean, we we took a very long time bargaining with the fire department on their last contract, and I certainly hope that it wouldn't be that way um, going forward. But it's really hard to say when it's such an important issue to people and their family's health care coverage and and how much it costs. So I just for security of ensuring that people have coverage. 
the preference of staff is to have you approve the master agreement with all three units. But like I said, if that's not what the council would like to do, then I would appreciate an amended um, agreement to approve the master agreement just for the non-rep staff. Okay, Mr. Farmer, you had a question? Yeah, and I might be putting them on the spot, but our two union presidents, uh, their feelings on what was just proposed, is, is that something that the unions could live with? So we're working very diligently. Please approach the microphone, Mr. Heron. Uh, sorry, Zach Heron, President of Sunnyside Firefighters. Uh, we've been working very diligently, not only with city staff, but also uh, an entity called DiMartino, who offers some of our other uh, insurances and we've asked them we we tried to get everything in place before tonight's meeting and it just wasn't possible with with our short, short notice uh we do feel that if this is tabled we will be able to come back even with everybody's busy schedules within the next two weeks prior to the next council and getting this wrapped up uh, in our letter we did ask to bargain it separate from upcoming contracts so it is a specific individual item uh, which is easier to get done versus trying to encompass everything into a large uh, collective bargaining agreement. So I'm confident that we'll be able to get our side done. Uh, we are, well, thank you. Uh, we are working uh, and comparing uh, multiple different uh, insurance options. And one, not only providing the best health insurance for our members and our families, but also hopefully saving ourselves in the city a little money in the long run also. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hicks. Yeah, my question is, as amount of expenditures to be budgeted in 2024, is this dollar for dollar what we're paying already for Teamsters? Um, the Teamster, so it is really difficult to answer that question because the structure of insurance rates for the Teamsters Welfare Trust is a composite insurance rate, which means basically every staff member pays the same amount of premium, whether or not they have a family of seven or just an individual. And the new plans that we have available through AWC are not composite. They're, they're based on actual family size and dependents that are covered. So for individuals that have a larger family that have been benefiting from the composite rate that's lower, um, the cost to the city and the staff member would probably increase and vice versa for people that are a single person, their costs would probably decrease. Because uh, we don't have the data on who was, who has how many dependents, um, we haven't been able to determine how what the actual implication is, and so we're hoping to get that done uh, in the next little bit too. I, I believe insurance costs in general are going up for 2024. So and there's there's really not a dollar for dollar um, from 23 to 24 with any plan. The flip side, is it the same exact coverage they have now? Um, it is very comparable. There are small differences, um, as with a lot of plans. But um, as far as like the coverage amount, 90%, and the deductible is actually a little bit less on the AWC plan. Further comments? Is there any way we could take all three entities separately? Yeah, absolutely. And so, and, and if that's what you want to do, then as I said, I'm comfortable with you approving or authorizing the city manager to sign an updated master agreement just for the non-rep staff. And we'll continue as we have been working with the unions to provide that. But like I said, the city's concern comes mainly from guidance from the health insurance provider based on the timeline that it takes to put coverage in place. I'm sure the union reps that are here, they don't want their people to go without insurance too. So I think it'll be high on their list. So I think that would be a, a good yeah. thing to go to. Yes, I think that would be the worst case scenario for everyone. Exactly. Other questions? Mr. Deputy Mayor, any questions, comments? Uh, no, no questions at this time, Mr. Mayor. Um, comment wise, um, I, I'm leaning toward approving the documents so that non-represented employees are are covered and the city can move forward with them since there will be no bargaining issues and then i'm willing to to give the, the unions 30 days or whatever to work with the city manager's office to come up with a solution thank you sir 
All right, council. So we have a request from the unions to not include them in this particular motion. Um, we can, and, and Mr. Deputy Mayor, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we need to have a, uh, a separate vote to strike them from the from this resolution, do we? No, Mr. Mayor, the, the motion is to strike and amend. Okay. Oh, so you've made this motion. I can, if you would like. Let's do that, and then we'll we'll step on approving the the next part. So, if you if you'll make that motion, okay. Um, I move I move the council uh, approve a resolution of the city council, of the city of Sunnyside, Washington, approving an employer master participation agreement between the city of Sunnyside and the AWC Employee Benefit Trust, and authorize the city manager to sign the agreement on behalf of the city as amended, removing the two bargaining units from the contract. Thank you, sir. And I'll second it. Okay, so motion by Deputy Mayor, second by Mr. Beeler. Debate on this item. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion as read by Deputy Mayor Ristucci, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. I two vote aye, motion carries. Police and fire, you have time to study this. Thank you. Meanwhile, non-reps get a chance to get some insurance put in place and get the paperwork filled out. Item D, volunteer and resident stipends. Consider approving a resolution of the city of Sunnyside, Washington, authorizing changes to the payment schedule for volunteer and resident firefighter stipends. I'm guessing, Chief, that is yours. Or am I wrong? No, I, I was hoping. Mike doesn't reach me. I'll just project my voice if that works. Um, so what this is, is just a, in essence, a, a cleanup of our pay scale. It's a change in format, not a change in value. Um, it is just simply for us to continue maintain our compliance, compliance, excuse me, with FLSA uh, suggestions and regulations. So uh, all this is, is that change from our, our former points system, which was, again, a, a, we'll call it a gray area. Um, to a very clean cut stipend program. Again, it is virtually dollar for dollar what the, the uh, previous uh, rate was. Again, it's not a change in value. It's a change in format. Thank you, sir. Council, questions or comments for the chief? Hearing none, what is the desire of council on this item? I'll move to approve. I'll second. All right, motion by Councilor Hicks, second by Councilor Ripley to approve a resolution of the City of Sunnyside authorizing changes to the payment schedule for volunteer and resident firefighter stipends. Debate on this item. Hearing none, all in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. I two vote aye. Motion passes. Item E, Recreation and Conservation Office Maintenance Grant. Consider approving a resolution to submit an application in the amount of $89,500 to the Recreation and Conservation Office in consideration of deferred maintenance. And whose is this? Sir, Mr. Sanchez. Thank you. Uh, so I bring forward to you this uh, resolution to us, authorize the city of Sunnyside for the application of the 89,500 to RCO in consideration of deferred maintenance. Um, so what this is, is uh, it's a one-time only maintenance grant for deferred maintenance. Um, there's, it's, uh, you can't do any capital improvements or ground disturbing activities. Um, it's uh, eligible activities are those maintenance tasks which have been deferred. Grants in the amount not to exceed $100,000 uh, will be awarded by RCO on a competitive basis. And there is a $5 million available statewide uh, there is no match requirement. Um, the city of Sunnyside intends to submit the application in the amount of 89500 to RCO in consideration of deferred maintenance at Central Park to include repainting of the pool house, uh, some removal of some trees, and some tree pruning. Uh, these tasks are beyond city staff's ability to complete and will be contracted if the application is successful, notification will be provided by our CO office by October 31st of 2023. So um, recommendation is to consider approving a resolution, submit an application in the amount of 89,500 to the Recreation Conservation Office uh, in consideration of deferred maintenance. 
Council. Questions, questions comments for Mr. Sanchez. Now, are, uh, is the city going to be putting out the bid and hiring people to do the work or do the work themselves? Or is some other entity going to come in and take care of everything? It, it would be out to bid and bring somebody else in and to do the painting and the the tree removal and pruning and yeah. It's a win-win situation then. Thank you. Cost us is there any work thought about doing maintenance on the inside the pool house? I would the locker yeah. rooms, is that included in yeah. there? Yeah, because the floor inside is really worn. So that would include painting of the inside flooring and the whole building. Okay. Other questions or comments? I'm always discouraged when I see trees being removed from our city park. I know it's necessary because they're really getting old and some of them are, they have some safety issues, but boy, have I always liked the shade in that park. <laughs> well, in the, in the trees that we're talking about here are three um, elm or not elm, uh, what are they? Yeah, elm uh, birch or something like that. They're right there by the, playground. by the playground, those big ones. And yeah. So they're, 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 they've grown over the playground, so they're 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 a hazard to the right. playground, and so they also put out those uh, little seeds in the spring that get into every crevice of the pool and everywhere. So obviously, we would plant some new ones farther away, and uh, a a better tree that wouldn't mm -hmm. put out uh, a mess like those do. Oh, I understand all of that, sir. It's just that I've always enjoyed the shade in that park. Yes, I remember when I was working, when I was in college, I worked on a dairy and I'd come into lunch for town and I could take a nap in the park underneath because I started on the dairy at 4 a.m. and I was supposed to be back on the job by four o'clock. And I had that window of opportunity to sleep under that tree. It's good memories for me. So, but those are all disappearing, but those things happen. All right. Questions, further questions or comments for Mr. Sanchez? All right. What is the desire of council on this item? Move to approve the resolution to submit an application in the amount of $89,500 to the Recreation and Conservation Office, considered RCO, in consideration for deferred maintenance. Thanks, sir. I'll second it. All right. Motion by Councilor Beeler, second by Councilor Ripley. Debate on this item. Hearing none. All in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. I also vote aye. Motion carries. Items from council members. Mayor's appointments for boards and commissions. To my knowledge, I have not received any applications. Is that correct, Mr. Anteria? There is one, and uh, it was emailed to you, Deputy Mayor, and Councilor Farmer for the Community and Economic Development Commission. Perfect. I have been gone, so I didn't see my email. So thank you for that. So we have one applicant. We'll be reviewing that application. Um, it's always nice to have more than one, but at least one is good, so we'll take a look at that. Council request status report. I don't see that there has been any updates, so everything's still the same. Very good, thank you. Council members, if there's any item that needs to be added to the council request status report, please, you can either tell us at this time or you can inform the manager or the clerk or myself, and we can get that added to the agenda. But nobody's jumping up right now with anything, so. Other reports, announcements, and or questions by council. This is our opportunity to share what we've been up to. And Mr. Deputy Mayor, I'm going to let you go first, because I think what you were doing a couple of weeks ago is really cool. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate that. Um, I'm having problems with my video tonight, so I do apologize. Um, so uh, as the mayor alluded to, um, uh, last week I had the opportunity of uh, going to Oregon and meeting with the Oregon and California State Transportation Commissions. Um, uh, as a state transportation for Washington, I was selected by my colleagues to be the um, be a member of the bi-state tolling committee and negotiate the tolling between Oregon and Washington when the new IBR comes into play. So I'm pretty excited about that. And then on the 20th, um, we had the YV COG general membership meeting, and I want to thank uh, Councilor Ripley for attending. Um, it was a, a, a well, uh, uh, well attended meeting. We had uh, members of the state legislature. Um, uh, Senator Nikki Torres was there and um, uh, Representative J.J. Sandlin was there. Um, and then we heard from Congressman Newhouse's office um, and, <coughs> excuse me, 
And basically, uh, the legislative update, Senator Torres talked about um, some of the work that she's been doing with um, MMIP, which is the Missing and Murdered Indigenous People um, program. So she's working with uh, Senator or Congressman Newhouse on that. Um, and Senator or Representative Sandlin advised us that he has been appointed to appropriations. So he is going to be learning as much as he can about the appropriations process in our state legislature. So that's all I have. Um, I would open the floor to Representative Ripley if she had say, wanted to say anything about the meeting. Go ahead, Ms. Ripley, if you'd like to comment on the meeting. He took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> It was a very good meeting. It was it was uh, a lot about the legislature, and it was very good. So I served on that committee as an alternate one year, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Unfortunately, it was during COVID, and it was all on Zoom, so we weren't doing that sort of stuff in person. But boy, did I learn a lot. I tell you, we've got some extremely intelligent people in our valley, and our representatives and senators are extremely committed to what they're doing. And so it is it is always enjoyable to attend those meetings. I. I thought it was a great, great time. All right, others, Mr. Beeler. Yeah, nothing to report. Thank you, sir, Mr. Hicks. Um, all I have is uh, went to the Sunshine Days parade. The parade was very nice. I wish it could have had more vendors, but take what we can get for now. <laughs> all right, thank you, sir, Mr. Farmer. Nothing. All right, and I too have nothing. I. I went to Arizona and hoped for the birth of a new granddaughter and was seriously disappointed. She refused to come while I was there. So, But I played with two grandsons, and that was fun, too. All right, upcoming council meetings. Ms. Renteria. So we have a workshop coming up on October 2nd. And it's um, a budget workshop, and you'll be discussing Sunnyside Housing Authority. Um, October 9th, you'll have a public hearing for revenue sources and property tax levy for 2024. And that has the public notice has already been published. October 23rd, you have an action item to set property tax levies for next year, a presentation um, to council of the from the city manager of the 2024 budget message and then the LTAC funding recommendations I just keep putting it um, I know Ms. Horner's working on getting something scheduled so I just keep moving it over so I'm not sure if it'll be actually be on the 23rd but that's what you have for the next three meetings all right thank you council members if there's any item that needs to be added to an agenda please get that to myself or to the city manager as soon as possible we can get that added to the meeting and I do have a question, Mr. Farmer. You were going to schedule an LTAC meeting. Have you been successful in that? We're working on it. Okay. We will look forward to hearing their recommendations on the requests for proposals. So next item, items from department heads. And in the absence of the city manager, I'm just going to start at the far end with the police chief. And what have you got for us, sir? Um, I don't have much, just one thing. I want to let everybody know October 30th will be our annual trunk or treat event downtown. And today the businesses were notified downtown that the streets would be closed down there for that event. So that's um, five to eight, I believe. Um, I, as it gets closer, I'll give you the exact times. I don't have off the top of my head. So thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Ms. Horner. Thank you, Council. Um, I do apologize to the LTAC and the applicants for that. It has been a crazy busy time of year with budget and an audit ongoing, um, but I am going to make every attempt to get that meeting scheduled so that we can present those to Council um, at the second meeting in October. So we're, we're trying very hard to stick with that plan. Um, I was wanting to make a couple of comments in regards to um, the public comment that was made earlier today. I want to make it very clear that I have a completely open door policy. I, my office is, I'm available by phone. People have my email address. Um, there are people sitting here on council, at least three of you that have, four of you actually, that have sat in my office and asked me questions and looked at the books um, live and right on the spot. Um, I implore anyone out there that has questions to please come and ask them to me because I would like to provide you those answers. It is difficult to have to sit here and have um, people lob accusations that 
at me when they have not made any attempt to come and actually get any of that information. Um, but I just want to make it very clear, and you can look back at previous meetings galore and see that I have constantly said, anytime anything controversial comes up, please come to my office, ask me the questions, send me an email, and I will get those, those responses back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Horner. Mr. Sanchez. Uh, I have uh, just some updates on the projects that have been going on. Um, North Avenue sidewalk improvement project, uh, the work has been completed. Uh, the YVH grind and overlay, that work has been completed. Uh, the 6th Street project, we're getting closer. <laughs> that one still dragging along a little bit, but we're getting close. And um, yeah, that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Mr. Martin. Um, <clears throat> I don't have too much for you. Um, the Community Economic Development Commission, we're going to be taking a tour of some of our neighboring cities this Thursday. Um, we're going to be looking at different incubators type projects, market type projects, and um, kind of get an idea because as we're moving forward with our economic development plan, um, we want to kind of um, brainstorm, I guess. So we're going on a little brainstorming trip to kind of uh, visit some other communities and let's see what they're doing. So that's, that'll be this Thursday, the 28th. Thank you, sir. Mr. Riley. Nothing at this time. I'll stand up. Questions for Mr. Riley? All right. Thank you, sir. Chief. We go back to enunciating. Can everybody hear me? Sorry. Yes. Project your voice, sir. <laughs> uh, uh, so quick statistics on the fire department. Year to date call volume. We're at 3,236 emergency calls for service, um, which is actually um, things have plateaued a little bit so we're actually kind of maintain our same call volume as last year at this point um the last couple of weeks we've responded to 167 of those emergencies um one uh, other category i'd like to draw some attention to which again i'm very proud of i mentioned this in previous meetings our year-to-date training hours as we continue to log our ongoing training we are now at 2188.3 training hours for 2023 uh, which is uh, awesome there's really no way to sugarcoat that a um, couple things, just in the last couple of weeks, we've completed all pump testing on all of our apparatus that do have a pump. Um, went really well for some, not for others, but, you know, like two out of three ain't bad, I guess, right? Um, and then uh, we also complete all hydro testing on all of our SCBAs. So with that, which we're, uh, we do that every, I believe, five years, and we're checking for leaks, um, any flaws with that would you know, be a potential uh, safety issue or hazard for our staff. So those have all been completed and, uh, and we're successful. Uh, we are expecting the delivery of our newest command vehicle by the end of this week. Uh, we're excited to see that in and get that in service. Um, and we are still on track for our new engine, uh, which approved a few months back for a January of 2024 delivery. So we're very excited and anxiously anticipating its arrival. Thank you, sir. Ms. Renteria. I was out of the office in the last since the 13th and I'm back. I just got to the office at 530, 430 today. Um, I do have three voice messages from Ruby Medina on September 20th, two voicemails and one on the 21st. And so I'll be responding to all the calls and emails that as, as many as I can tomorrow when I'm back in the office. But it's nice to be back from vacation. My brother got married in Guadalajara, Mexico. So I'm just excited to be back. All right. And I know whenever I come back from Mexico, it takes me a day or two to start thinking in English. So you're doing okay. well. You said it in English. Oh. And I was, and I'm just expressing that I'm impressed because it takes me a day or two to get that squared away. So, all right. So that brings us to the end of our agenda. I do want to make one comment. I want to make it on the record. And that is this until I have, or council has, or our attorney has really strong evidence in our hands, I fully 100% support our city manager and her department heads. I heard some things tonight that were downright painful to listen to. Accusations that until I see something in my hands is unfounded and unfair. All right. So I want that on the record that I support our department heads. And I support our, our city manager. And yeah, again, if you've got something that you can show me and put it in my hands, then I'll consider it. But until then, they have my support. Thank you very much, everybody. And this meeting is adjourned at 9-11. Thank you and good night. Here, here, Mr. Mayor. <laughs>